Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host, Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSER accredited exercise physiologist. In this video, I'm going to be covering the topic of how much weight can I safely lift after breast cancer? Because as you can imagine, if you've had breast cancer and you've had lymph nodes removed and you're at risk of lymphedema, one of the most common questions that pops up from my patients is how much weight can I safely lift without aggravating or increasing my risk of lymphedema. So that's what we're going to cover in this video today. So if you enjoy this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below. And please ask me any questions around any breast cancer topics you'd like more information on or any questions around strength training and lifting when it comes to lymphedema risk. So first of all, let's just step back in time for a second and we will talk about why in previous years, lymphedema patients or people at risk of lymphedema were told not to lift anything heavy. Uh, most of the advice given to patients in previous years was along the lines of don't lift anything heavy and don't lift anything with repetitive movement. So as you can imagine, there are a lot of breast cancer survivors out there still today who will steer clear of doing any formal strength training. They'll be really cautious with what sort of loads they put into their arm. And unfortunately, this advice is now defunct. So the advice we now give to patients who've gone through breast cancer who are at risk of lymphedema or even those who have existing lymphedema has really flipped on its head. So what we now say to patients is that the stronger and the fitter you can get your arm, really the better it is towards either lymphedema prevention or managing existing lymphedema. Now, as you can imagine, with that advice coming from medical professionals and allied health professionals and even lymphedema physiotherapists and therapists over quite a long period of time, uh, there, there's an amount of natural fear and caution that that drives into the patient. So if you've been told, don't lift anything heavy, you know, be very careful about what loads you, you put into your arm that's had lymph nodes removed. Um, you know, don't do any repetitive movements, you're going to be very cautious of what you do with that limb. Now, the problem with that is that if we look at the physiology of the lymphatic system, it doesn't really match up. So what I mean by this is, and I've said this in other videos before, so if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know what I'm about to talk about here. So one of the things with the lymphatic system is that say if you compare it to the arterial system if you cut an artery it will spurt blood because the heart is pumping behind that arterial system whereas if you cut a lymphatic vessel it will trickle and that's because there is no major pump com when compared to the arterial system in the lymphatic system so there's no major pump in the lymphatic system so ultimately, that means the lymphatic system relies heavily on the muscle contraction around it to allow it to flow and move. So if you think about it, what do we do in classic strength training? We contract our muscles on a repetitive basis. So when the old advice was being given, they really hadn't done much research on exercise. I think it was a bit of a... Uh, we'll just apply these safety rules and just to be you know conservative and, and cautious so they've ultimately found that the opposite is true which I will show you a little bit later in this video how we safely get you to perform exercise how you can build yourself up slowly but ultimately it is much much more preventative for those at risk of lymphedema to be doing strength training so lifting weights and it is also very good for patients with existing lymphedema as long as their lymphedema is managed well with compression garments and other treatment techniques to also be lifting weights. So one of the biggest problems with being really cautious or fearful of moving your arm that's at risk of lymphedema or fearful or cautious of moving an arm that has existing lymphedema is that there is a high chance that you are going to lose physical condition of the limb. So what I mean by that is you're going to drop muscle mass. You might find that your shoulder or other joints in the upper limb become stiffer, which ultimately means that it's harder to move that arm. You'll 
really going to be putting yourself into a position where by which when you have to lift something so if a grandchild runs up to you and you have to pick them up or if you have to put something up in an overhead shelf or you have to carry grocery bags from your car to your pantry then you're ultimately going to be finding that that's going to cause your arm um, some problems because if you've protected it for a long time and you're nervous or cautious about using the muscles in that limb then ultimately they're going to waste. So the idea of building up the strength in that arm is also of the premise that we want the arm to be able to handle normal daily functional activities like picking up grandkids or children, carrying shopping bags, anything around the house where there's a little bit of load like moving gardening pot or taking an oven dish out of the tray that that arm needs to be able to cope with. So the theory is that if we can get your arm strong and fit, it's going to tolerate those activities much better than if it was deconditioned. And personally, from what I've seen in my clinical experience, I really do feel that the people who are generally fitter and stronger are those that are less likely to get lymphedema compared to people who are sedentary, too scared to use the limb, lacking muscle mass and lacking range of motion on that limb. So resistance training has definitely been found to reduce your risk of the onset of lymphedema. So if you have had lymph nodes removed from your armpit and you're looking to reduce your risk, exercise is a really good way to go, but in particular strength training, which is referring to lifting weights. If you have got existing lymphedema, it's also a good thing to be doing strength training because again, that regular muscle contraction is helping flush that lymph fluid away from the limb. So the answer to the question, how much weight can I safely lift after breast cancer? There is no upper limit that we know of that is deemed unsafe to lift after breast cancer. If you've had lymph nodes removed and you're at risk of lymphedema, if you've got existing lymphedema, I will say there is also no upper limit, but whatever weights you are lifting, your lymphedema has to be under control. So what I mean by this is if you've got existing lymphedema and you are going to the gym and you're lifting weights and those weights are causing your arm to swell up even more, then it means the lymphedema is not being managed appropriately. It might mean a change of compression garment. It might mean that you need to change the way you're doing a gym program. There could be a whole heap of reasons as to why weights could be causing fluid buildup in the limb or excess fluid forming in the limb but at the end of the day if your lymphedema is there but it's well controlled you should be being encouraged to lift weight and also to not have an upper limit on weight you lift. Let's talk about how you can increase the weight you are lifting in a safe and efficient manner. So first and foremost if you've never done any strength training before but you're really keen to start doing strength training after breast cancer which by the way has a lot of really really positive benefits. So as an example most of the breast cancer patients that I see in my clinic will have lost some physical condition through the course of their treatment. So strength training is really going to help you regain that muscle mass and again, I believe the muscle mass gains that breast cancer patients can make through strength training are also really going to improve their energy levels. So many of my breast cancer patients will talk about the fact that after treatment is finished, that in the medium to long term, it's their energy levels that they notice can be quite impacted. So if there's one thing I think all breast cancer survivors should consider, it's actually getting a gym program ideally tailored to you by a qualified exercise physiologist or physiotherapist, ideally someone who specializes in treating patients with breast cancer and being able to progress yourself um, with those exercises and really rebuild your muscle mass because I think that improves your energy levels. The other really massive benefit of strength training, of course, is improving bone stock, which a lot of people who've gone through breast cancer are at higher risk of, of losing. So bone stock is um, a problem for breast cancer patients. Often, say, women who go through breast cancer may be postmenopausal. So if you're postmenopausal, you're at higher risk of lower bone mineral density. Some hormone-blocking medication can increase your risk of low bone mineral density 
and if you've been through chemotherapy, your bone loss can be um, quite significant. So that's a that's, there's a couple of really really huge benefits of um, strength training away from lymphedema prevention as to why it's so great for breast cancer survivors or breast cancer patients to be doing. So when you start strength training, to do it safely, particularly if you've never done it before, the slogan that we tend to use in the breast cancer space is start low and progress slow. So ultimately what that means is you keep the weight you are lifting when you first start quite low, so one to two kilos, and then you progress that weight slowly. So in an ideal world, you'd most likely start with one or two kilos and you would stick to that one or two kilos within the same week. And then if you are not noticing any symptom changes in the affected arm, meaning the arm that's had the lymph nodes removed, then the following week you could go up between one to two kilos at maximum. So for all of my patients, I recommend that the increase in their weight is one to two kilos. There was some research done about 12 years ago that recommended a half kilo increase. Clinically, I don't think that's practical for a lot of patients because the difference between half a kilo to a kilo and one to two kilos in the practical world or your everyday life, um, you're probably lifting more kilos in your handbag, in your grandchildren, closing your car door or lifting your shopping. So I believe it is very safe for patients to make that graduated increase in their um, in the weights they're lifting by one to two kilos as long as they're monitoring their arm. So I think that if you start at one kilo and you stay at one kilo, and this is regardless of the exercise for the minute, so start at one kilo within the week and finish at that one kilo within the week, monitor your arm between the sessions, and then the following week if you're feeling confident that your arm's doing fine and you're feeling confident to lift a slightly heavier weight, jump by one or two kilos the following week and again plateau within that week. So as long as you're not making huge jumps in weight, you know, I wouldn't suggest anyone jumps by five kilos or more. Um, and as long as you're not jumping too quickly within a week. So in an ideal world, when we do strength training, we really want people to say if you're doing an arm session on a Monday, you do another arm session on a Wednesday or a Thursday, but you would make sure that you are not making a leap within that week. You would look to make your next increase in your weight the following week and maxing out that increase by one to two kilos. Another thing that would be really beneficial for people who are looking to start doing strength training after breast cancer would be to get a lymphedema index score prior to starting any strength training. So what this refers to is an LDEX score and this is essentially a snapshot of your lymphatic system. It's done on a Sozo device which is actually over my left hand shoulder as we speak. So the LDEX device that I use is a Sozo device which is sitting right over behind me here in the corner and in 30 seconds it can give you a very clear idea as to whether there might be any existing lymphedema in your affected limb or not. So getting a couple of baseline LDEX scores is a really good idea to do prior to lifting any weights so that in the circumstance that you start lifting weights and then you think you've got symptomatic changes in that arm that might be lymphedema, you can compare LDEX scores to before you started to after you started. Now, I must mention here that a lot of strength training can sometimes make your arm sore, particularly if that limb is deconditioned because it's very typical that after breast cancer treatment that the limb has lost muscle mass and that you will find that once you start trying to strengthen that limb that you might get a little bit sore. So one of the reasons we don't want you to go overboard when you first start is because if you've got an already deconditioned arm when you're first starting strength training, if you go into the gym and you lift really heavy weights with really high repetition and then you go back the next day and you do it again and you cause what we refer to as delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS in that arm, that's a potential trigger for lymphedema. So delayed onset muscle soreness is the breakdown of the muscle following a bout of strength training, which is a normal more physiological response to strength training. We just don't want our patients who are at risk of lymphedema to go in and deliberately make yourself really, really sore 
because that could potentially risk aggravating lymphedema. So this is why we refer to the slogan, start low, progress low, because as long as you're starting at a level which is not going to overtax the arm, and then every time you go up in your weights, you're just doing small increments, you're not jumping from level one to level 11, then generally speaking, you're going to be doing this safely and you're going to significantly reduce your risk of aggravating lymphedema. If you don't have access to an LDEX device like a Sozo, then the next best thing you can do is at least get some circumferential arm measurements. Um, if you can do this with a lymphedema physiotherapist, even better, so that they can monitor your arm um, circumferential measures, literally with a tape measure. And then if there's any symptomatic changes, then you can at least compare arm measurements you can talk to your physiotherapist about it and then you've also got to marry that up with what symptomatic changes are happening in your arm. So if there's any symptomatic changes in your arm between strength sessions, that's reason enough to go and have a chat with your lymphedema physiotherapist, get them to assess your arm and potentially also get an LDEX score performed and or arm measurements as required. The last thing I'll mention about increasing your weight safely after breast cancer is that if you've come off a long break, so if you've gone on a holiday for four weeks or if you've been unwell and you haven't been able to get to the gym and perform your program, then one of the best things you can do is when you're returning to strength training to drop your weights by say 20% or 50% rather than going straight back into what you were doing before you had a holiday or a period of time off. So this is just another safety measure that we tend to use if you are coming back from four or more weeks of not doing any strength training that when you return to the gym you just drop those weights back by up to 50% or a reasonable amount so that you're going back in and not overtaxing that limb. And this applies to people whether they've got existing lymphedema or or whether they're at risk of lymphedema. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. I hope you've gained some really good information about how you can safely increase your weights after breast cancer. As I've said throughout this video, the main take home message is that it's really important to give yourself that permission to progress your weights because the benefits of strength training regardless of lymphedema prevention are so far reaching for breast cancer survivors that I feel like I can't recommend strength training highly enough. So please consider getting into any form of strength training in a safe and efficient manner that you can. And in an ideal world, get your LDEX scores and talk to your lymphedema physiotherapist prior to starting a strength training program. Um, and if you can also get a strength training program tailored to you by a physical therapist, physiotherapist or exercise physiologist, then even better again. I'll be back next week with another video. I hope you're having a wonderful week wherever you are. I'm Jen McKenzie, the Breast Cancer Physio, and I'll see you next time.